All right, uh, so that was Momentum's uh, change of heart, saying it wants to show its heart after massive public pressure. Now, South Africa's uh, public debt and other liabilities are expected to continue rising in line with trends on higher wages, the interest bill going up, and uh, we still have state-owned enterprises in a very fragile situation, particularly ESCOM. That's part of the IMF, the International Monetary Fund's uh, staff concluding statement released yesterday after completing an official visit to South Africa recently. The IMF also recommending a more efficient provision of state-owned enterprises with lower input costs for households and businesses. So basically the IMF saying it's somewhat disillusioned with what's going on in South Africa. It's seeing a rise in inequality, one of the things we don't need, and it's not seeing the turnaround uh, that was initially expected at some of the state-owned entities. To discuss, uh, we're now joined by Professor Patrick Bond, a distinguished professor of the political economy at the University of Witts. He joins us via Skype. Professor, thank you for being with us. The, the initial optimism, uh, the IMF talks about initial optimism. A lot of that was around uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa. Is this about his economic leadership? Yes, and to some extent, as we went into um, officially a recession, as the failure to uh, generate, uh, you know, a kind of a higher optimism amongst the, the ratings agencies, Standard and Poor's, Fitch and Moody's, um, and with the investment conference, uh, there was a jobs summit, there was a, um, a, a midterm budget, there was a, a stimulus. All of these in the last two three months just aren't uh, suggestive of a major new boost to the economy. And so the IMF is just the latest. Um, you know, they were here in July. Every year they do the Article 4 consultation. Um, and they're getting more and more pessimistic. In a way, I think it's healthy. I, I welcome the, the sort of uh, pessimism because often the IMF is way too optimistic. Uh, and what they've just put out also the last couple of weeks is a warning about world uh, finance and the over leveraging of uh, especially multinational corporations. So this is a slightly different IMF than we've seen, say, in 2000. 2008 or 1998 when uh, the kind of economic turbulence we just saw on Wall Street today just caught them off guard. But, but it does make you think, you know, what can South Africa do? You said there's been a lot of initiatives. There have been attempts uh, to deal with the, the thorny issues, the mining charter, the gas bill, the things that were deterring investors, uh, but, but it's not good enough. That's quite right. I think this is the point at which we should be asking, is the strategy uh, requiring a major rejigging? So the National Development Plan is currently under reconsideration, rewrite. It has had an export oriented focus. In 2011, at the peak of the commodity super cycle, where iron ore and gold and platinum uh, and coal are four big mineral exports, were uh, achieving extremely high returns. The NDP was promoting very strong mega project export of these products. And I think now the IMF is really sending us a signal we should be listening to. That is, the world economy is a, a very turbulent, dangerous place. And what this new report, uh, it's really just one page, you can find it online, imf.org backslash, then you find the South Africa page. And it's very short, but it does say, like the Turkey, the Argentina emerging markets crises, we also are terribly vulnerable. Our foreign debt, actually, they don't talk about, but it's over $180 billion. Uh, and I think that's where we're going to start facing in the next six months to a year, repayment problems. We saw in January this year, ESCOM really struggling to make a World Bank loan repayment. And I think that's where we'd like to see the IMF uh, maybe offering some uh, conciliation. Maybe uh, there's a chance now to talk about rescheduling of debt rather than repaying it. You know, some some of our debts, like the $5 billion loans that Brian Molefe took out for Transnet and for ESCOM, plus the biggest World Bank loan ever for Madupi at ESCOM, really those should be rethought. Those were odious debts. They were funding corruption. I think that's the situation we'll all be talking about within a few months. Yeah. Well, uh, many argue that Pravin Gordon is doing the dirty work with the, the SOEs, trying to uh, find those, those people guilty of corruption. There has been changes in, in boards, there have been firings, there have been moves, uh, but has it been much more difficult than previously thought to turn those state-owned companies around? Yes, I mean, if you accept the premises of, for example, the massive locomotives that we were purchasing with a China Development Bank loan, $5 billion dollars, 
with China South Rail as that main supplier, with kickbacks to the Guptas. Uh, similarly for ESCOM, the major uh, corruption there that has been surfaced in addition to McKinsey and all of the Zupta sort of related things was the Hitachi, Japanese boiler maker with uh, Chancellor House, 25% local ownership. And those were massive parts of the Madupi and Kusile. Uh, th th those to me, both those uh, kinds of financing problems uh, are going to be very, very serious. And I think we should be asking, um, should South Africa pay back the money? Should we take very high tariff increases uh, as, uh, you know, uh, the ratings agencies are sort of gunning for 15% increases from ESCOM. But I think that's taking the presumptions without questioning uh, the morality. Should uh, China Development Bank, China South Rail, Hitachi, Chancellor House, uh, McKinsey, all of these guys, should they be allowed to get away with it? Or should we ask uh, who really should pay back the but, money? Should it be South Africa? Surely it'll be very difficult to try and bring those funds in needed basically now from foreign countries, Patrick. Well, that's why we have, unfortunately, the third highest interest rate in the world. We're right up there with Turkey and Argentina. Uh, there's another layer with Indonesia, Russia, Pakistan. And yes, so in order to attract hot money, uh, the short term or even 10 year uh, certificates of deposits and, and 10 year bonds and all, those are going to be still excessively expensive. And that raises all of our interest rates. If, if all, we'd all like to see a cut in, in rates, that would be a stimulative of the economy. But I think, you know, to, to get that, we actually have to talk about um, the two dirty words, exchange controls, because that would keep the money in the country, which would allow the interest rates to come down without the threat of massive capital flight. Professor, finally, we're, we're seeing load shedding already. Uh, ESCOM uh, suggesting things could get worse. That, that must be a huge reputational issue uh, when we're already dealing with all these fragilities in, in the economy. Oh, that's right, because we've been told again and again that the most durable source of energy is coal. And you burn coal, you get a lot of it, and it uh, provides the base load. That's what we've been told. But now it rains, and the coal gets wet, and the Zupta relationships that we've had uh, with uh, some of those coal companies through Oak Bay and Glencore now aren't delivering the coal, and so we have uh, insufficient coal. It does mean, I think, we should speed up the transition to renewables. But as you know, that's been controversial. It was a march on on Saturday by metal workers and mine workers, actually two opposed unions, one from Kasatu, one from Saftu, but they're coming together. I think what they would like is a state-owned renewable strategy and what's called the just transition. I don't, I don't think until we can get over that hurdle, until we have some visionaries, and I don't think it includes uh, Energy Minister Jeff Kadebe, energy um, that is renewable, uh, but it is socially controlled, worker self-managed uh, for the good of the society. Unfortunately, we're, we're giving big European companies uh, major markets on the renewables and I think that's going to have to change to get the unions to come on board and so we get more stable electricity based on our sun and our wind with the coal as a transitional backup. All right, so more vision required for the economy. That's after the IMF said that some of the initial optimism uh, from foreign investors has rarely waned. That was Professor Patrick Bond, a professor of political economy at Wits University.